So as I shared earlier, I just returned last night from uh, eight days in St. Louis attending uh, the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church USA. Uh, General Assembly meets uh, once every two years uh, in which people gather. Uh, Presbyterians are sent uh, from the presbyteries all over the country. Missionaries come. Uh, various folks come and they gather um, to kind of discuss uh, overtures uh, from presbyteries to uh, wrestle with issues. And, and the General Assembly basically functions as kind of setting the vision, the agenda, uh, the kind of energy moving forward as a national church. Um, I was thought that maybe I could bring some pictures this morning, um, kind of like I was showing you pictures uh, slideshow from my summer vacation. I thought of, of maybe sharing that, uh, but I, I decided not to, and you can thank me later for not doing that. So, um, the, the truth is, and I must confess, in the week uh, prior to uh, my going, uh, I, there was some excitement about going, but also I had uh, more than a little dread. Um, part of the reason for that is because I know Presbyterians. Uh, there's the line, and when you get two Presbyterians together, uh, they form four committees. Uh, Presbyterians love meetings. Uh, and I'll be truthful that uh, I have experienced enough Presbyterian meetings from committees to session to presbytery to synod um, to best describe them, and have used this word, these descriptions, mind-numbing and soul-sucking. Uh, my, um, uh, my very definition of hell is a presbytery meeting that never ends. Uh, so I had uh, quite a bit of dread, I, I will have to say, going into this eight days of meetings. God help me. So I was really taken aback um, when, as the week unfolded, as I experienced this general assembly, um, I was really taken aback that it became such a deeply spiritual experience for me. I was surprised. It was a mountaintop experience. Uh, and so... Um, as I unpack it in the, in the coming months, as I reflect on it, I thought this morning I would describe for you why it was such a deeply powerful spiritual experience. And part of that dynamic uh, immediately, and, and they have people who gather, and what happens, we gather um, uh, from all over the country, uh, was the amazing experience of gathering with about a thousand Presbyterians from all over this country um, and being connected to each other. Um, you, it's the wide spectrum of the Presbyterian church. It was, there are teaching elders, ministers of word and sacrament uh, who, who are attending from all over the country. In fact, one of the joys for me was connecting to some old seminary classmates uh, that I won't tell you how long ago, but quite a while since I had seen them. Uh, there's also ruling elders, uh, uh, lay people who, are, who have been elected, who've served on sessions. Uh, part of the tradition, part of one of the basic ideas of our understanding of church government is you always have an equal number of teaching elders, ministers, and ruling elders at all councils uh, of the church, at the Presbytery, the Synod, and the General Assembly. You had also uh, attending this, this, uh, this meeting uh, where youth advisory delegates, each presbytery sends uh, a young person, could be high school or college age, uh, who is an, what's called an advisory delegate, who actually has a voice on the floor of committees and on the floor of the larger plenary gathering, uh, though their vote is uh, considered at the, at the larger gathering, you are shown what they voted for on a particular motion or, um, or a particular item to advise those of us uh, who were delegates, including it along with these young people who were amazing, uh, had the courage to stand up and speak um, in, a, in a gathering of a thousand people. 
Um, you also had theological advisory delegates. You had missionary advisory delegates. We even had ecumenical advisory delegates. Um, so the wide spectrum of, of the ministry and work of the church, uh, it, was, it was really engaging and ins inspiring to hear voices uh, talking about uh, issues facing the church. Um, you know, voices with accents from Boston and New York to uh, the deep south, South Carolina and North Carolina to Texas uh, to the Northwest. And you met all these Presbyterians and all of us gathering from all parts of the United States. Uh, it, was, it was amazing. Uh, the sense of connection uh, you immediately felt with these folks who share this tradition. Uh, the other thing that immediately struck me was actually the wide diversity that exists uh, in the Presbyterian Church. Um, something sometimes we don't get to glimpse here in Des Moines, Iowa, which let's admit is a, a rather um, uh, white area of the, of the country, but the sense in which there were African Americans and um, uh, persons of Hispanic descent and Asians and Koreans and uh, the wide spectrum. In fact, one of the interesting things about our General Assembly, about our national structure, is that, uh, is that uh, our stated clerk uh, is an African-American pastor by the name of J. Herbert Nelson. Uh, he's kind of, that's the, one of the largest offices in the Presbyterian Church. Um, and he speaks from that uh, tradition. Uh, we just elected the executive director of the Presbyterian Mission Agency, the, the agency uh, that runs almost all the mission nationally and world mission is an African-American woman pastor. In fact, one could tell that people were intentional. We were very intentional about committee leadership and commission leadership, that it reflect the wide spectrum of the colors of the Presbyterian Church. And there was something very powerful about experiencing that kind of multicultural nature of our society in general. There was something incredibly meaningful uh, uh, about connecting to that, as if uh, we were glimpsing something of what the world could and should be. It was amazing. The theme... Uh, for uh, this general assembly, uh, the theme that they identified from the beginning, beginning was the theme of kingdom in the building kingdom in the 21st century. And the idea behind that um, uh, was the idea of kingdom is a, a different way of thinking about the kingdom of God. Uh, the king tends to be a kind of male language, kind of an understanding that's very hierarchical, whereas the idea of kingdom captures that broad sense of community that we believe is articulated by Jesus in what it means by the kingdom of God. Kingdom kind of captures that broad sense of us being kins, of being siblings together, um, who, uh, who brothers and sisters together, uh, from diverse sections of the world around us, uh, diverse sections of our society in general. Uh, and the incredible, so there was this experience of community that startled me, uh, of young and old, male and female, um, as I said, persons of color across the spectrum, people of different sexual orientations, the sense of connection and unity I'll be honest, blew me away and inspired me. And Mac, I do think that is an image of what God's kingdom, what God's kingdom will be. And so to experience that was incredible. The other aspect of this, uh, of the General Assembly in the midst of all these uh, meetings was a very strong intentionality to worship every single day. And to have these amazing preachers from all over the country uh, preach to us and interpret and sing. In fact, uh, the music was inc incredible. There was a strong uh, music, traditional music, contemporary. Uh, uh, you folks uh, here will be happy to know that jazz played a predominant 
kind of musical theme. In fact, we had a concert on Thursday night uh, uh, by a jazz saxophonist, uh, and it was titled The Gospel According to Jazz. So incredible music, uh, incredible singing, incredible preaching, uh, communion at every single worship service. So, so, and, and these preachers who would speak to us, uh, proclaim to us strong themes of peace and justice and love. One didn't feel alone in the world in, in a significant way, in a hopeful way about the world we live in. Now, one of the dynamics that, is, uh, that we can fold is, is that it wasn't really a retreat from the world. In fact, we found ourselves in different days uh, addressing some of the urgency of now. We would, uh, we would stop in the midst of our busyness and business and pray for those uh, children of immigrants torn from their families. We would pray in the midst and hear the news of two young black men shot uh, in, in Pittsburgh. Uh, we would find ourselves, uh, the world kind of, uh, if not intruding, in fact embraced in the reality of the, the heart and the disunity and uh, the pain of the world around us, we we didn't run from it or retreat from it. It was in our general assembly together. And it was powerful as we lifted up our words of prayer. Thousands strong. In fact, it wasn't just words of prayer. One of the events that happened at this general assembly is that on a Tuesday, over 500 of us marched in the streets from the assembly hall to the jailhouse at St. Louis, Missouri. And you've not seen anything until you see 500 uh, Presbyterians marching in the street. And the reason was we presented to local activists in the community uh, some money we had raised at our, 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 first, our, our offering at the first worship, uh, which was um, about $50,000. And we went to the jail to present to local activists who are working to help poor people who are in jail simply because they cannot afford cash bail. That one of the things we wanted to witness to is people shouldn't be in jail simply for weeks without trial simply because they cannot afford to pay bail. And so we witnessed and lived out uh, as a community uh, the truth um, that Presbyterians, that we as followers of Jesus, stand with them. That was amazing to experience. Amazing. It was a glimpse of the kingdom of God. And we spent, I can't tell you how many hours debating and discussing and reflecting together on various motions and overtures that had come to this gathering, various questions that we were trying to make some kind of statement about from issues of Israel and Palestine uh, to the immigration issues, issues from prevention of gun violence to the death penalty, uh, issues uh, that dealt with the injustices we experience uh, uh, or we see experienced in our society and what the church has to say to that to uh, one of the more controversial issues we struggled with was divestment from fossil fuel companies. Whether we stay engaged in conversation with, with those companies or whether we divest in a better testament or a better witness might be to step back from that. And this assembly uh, really wrestled with that question and decided we're going to stay invested at least two more years. And there was something powerful about this diverse group of people from all over this country, something amazing about us actually wrestling with and discussing and one might say even fighting over How do we solve these problems? 
And there's something amazing about that, in a particular in our society today that doesn't believe we can invest in and talk about and wrestle and disagree and find a way forward. It's as diverse a group as you could imagine, young and old, male and female, people of all races, and we came together and we trusted each other and we engaged in meaningful, meaningful yearning for a different kind of world. So one of the things that struck me from this text, um, one of the things that struck me is the line, God's dwelling place is now among the people. And God will dwell with them. They will be God's people and God will be with them and be their God. That really, the kingdom, the kingdom of God is not some place in the future. It's not some uh, location somewhere else. That really, the kingdom and kingdom of God is among the people. That every Sunday when we gather here to worship, um, to wrestle together, to yearn for peace and justice and love and unity, that when we gather each and every Sunday, every Sunday, that we reflect and know that kingdom and kingdom as brothers and sisters just as much as we did last week. This is what gives me hope and excitement about the church and about the change and challenge we can make uh, to a very broken world that needs a people where God dwells. To God be the glory this day and forevermore. Amen.